In 20LX, 2060, we could be living on a planet that's no longer getting hotter, stopping, even reversing climate change. And if that's our future, it's probably because we've gotten really good at pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. It's called carbon sequestration. And we might be able to do it in part thanks to something that's been on Earth for millions of years, kelp. The stuff has been around since the Miocene era. That's when apes first evolved about 20 million years ago. But this ancient plant is gonna be critical to our next 40 years. So to explain kelp's part in all this, we're actually gonna revisit a story from the NBCLX archives about an ocean farm just off the coast here in Southern California. Now the ocean farm has since filed for bankruptcy and shut down, but you can think of this sort of like Thomas Edison and the invention of the light bulb. He was finally able to make it work because he learned from where others failed. Tucked away at the port of Los Angeles, you'll find a long row of old warehouses that don't look too special. But inside, you'll find names like Boeing, NASA, and Phil Kruver. Phil started the Catalina Sea Ranch in 2011, and we hopped on a boat with him for a pretty rough ride out into the Pacific to a 100-acre patch of ocean about six miles off the coast of California, where the Catalina Sea Ranch is farming mussels. Yes, mussels are the main crop, but thanks to a half million dollar federal grant, the Catalina Sea Ranch started an experiment with giant kelp. Kelp grows very naturally here close to shore, but no one's grown it out in the ocean, but we have it out there growing now. We put it on ropes. We were paid a $500,000 by the Department of Energy to figure out how to do it at scale and make a profit at it. The bankruptcy filing by Catalina Sea Ranch proves this business isn't easy, even with the support of federal grants. I mean, it's not like kelp is a cash crop, but as a climate solution, this could be a jackpot. There's this idea that if we feed seaweed to cattle, that they might actually produce less methane and that's better for the environment. And then the other really big part is this. There's some new research from right here in Santa Barbara, California that shows that with enough seaweed growing in the ocean, we can pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. It is not a silver bullet. I talked to Hallie Froelich about what she and her colleagues at UCSB found around the enormous potential for seaweed. One, because it grows fast, and two, because of all the ways it can help our warming planet. We've been talking about kind of that carbon offsetting, sequestration, uh, methane reduction potential, but other things, the charismatic carbon potential of seaweed is also seemingly really high. What do you mean by that? So the charismatic potential is all these other ecosystem services that seaweed can provide. In particular, it can pull and extract out nutrients um, from the environment, and that's particularly good if we have too many nutrients. So runoff is a major problem that can lead to things like low oxygen or dead zones. It can also buffer against ocean acidification. Sounds great, right? Okay, and it is. But seaweed, like with any crop in the water or on land, hinges on one thing. It's gonna definitely take some effort and real, a real good think on how you do actually integrate something successfully into the economics of it all. Because in the end, if people can't make money off of it, we won't do it. But Phil and the Catalina Sea Ranch think they can make green and be green at the same time. Because here's the thing about a diverse ocean farm. It wouldn't just be seaweed doing cleanup. Shellfish do a great job of filtering ocean water. Studies from New York Harbor and Cape Cod show that depending on the species, a single shellfish can filter between 20 and 50 gallons of salt water every day. That's particularly important with all the nitrogen spilling into the oceans as runoff from fertilizer in land-based farms. That just worsens the ocean acidification that Hallie talked about. But oysters, clams, and mussels soak up that nitrogen and use it to grow their shells. It's similar to how a tomato plant pulls nitrogen from the soil. Still, though, climate change isn't gonna wait for any of this. So yeah, the economics are tough, but the process is actually really simple. Kelp grows, it absorbs CO2, and then we take it deep into the ocean and sink it. Basically, bye-bye greenhouse gas. We also wanna work on kelp that is resistant to rising sea temperatures, and kelp creates habitat for the rest of the ecosystem. All right, so what Lindsay's talking about there is actually the reason that I came here, down the coast a bit to La Jolla. I'm here to, pardon the pun, to dive a little bit deeper on the idea of how ocean farming may actually combat climate change and even how the oil industry has a part to play in all this. I would definitely say we're environmentalists, but I would also say we're realists. Amber Sparks and Emily Hazelwood became friends as grad students and now they dive together. 
They also co-founded Blue Latitudes, an environmental consulting firm for offshore industry like ocean farms, research groups, and oil companies. When you pull up to one of these things, they're massive. I mean, you're looking at something that's like the Empire State Building sticking out of the water. And then you roll over the side and it totally transforms. You're not looking at an oil platform anymore. You're looking at a reef. This is a big part of their work, converting oil rigs to coral reefs, creating and restoring ecosystems. Really, it's, it's finding the common ground between profit and planet. These platforms, in, in many senses, they're brilliant because oil companies spend a lot of money to build a structure that can house up to 150, 300 people, and also it's meant to be in the water column for a long time. So from that perspective, what can you do with a structure like that? That structure could be used for as the platform and base for an offshore wind farm. It could be used to potentially host batteries that are collecting wave energy. It could be used for aqua farming. Imagine that, old oil rigs converted to serve as a home base for kelp farms. If you think about it, it's sort of like the mechanics of the oil industry in reverse. We'd basically be putting carbon back where it came from. So there's a lot of potential here. Scientists think that already kelp sequesters as much carbon every year as is produced by the entire state of New York. And there's a university in Australia that's studying creating entire islands made of kelp. And off the coast of Maine, a startup called Running Tide is focused solely on growing kelp to sequester carbon. They're getting a lot of attention, funding from venture capital, even guidance from some really smart people at the Smithsonian and MIT. So big picture, researchers think that we could actually grow kelp all around the world in an area that's about six times the size of Australia. And just think about how far that would go in getting us to a carbon-free 20LX.